Hi, Dave Scotland for CGSWAT.com, and this is just a quick tip, and uh, just to let you know that uh, in the in the future I'll be doing some uh, some shorter tutorials, just quick tips based on queries that people have sent me through the site, and uh, they'll they'll only be sort of little five, you know, maximum sort of ten minute tips. Um, but feel free to send me any of your queries through the site. Uh, usually I'll get back to you and ask you to send me the source file for me to have a look at. And uh, that's what somebody has done here. Uh, based on a recent tutorial I did on RPF files, uh, this particular user was having some trouble in Maya, and, uh, or Maya, depending on which part of the planet you live. Um, Basically, he was having some trouble with Z depth, uh, m um, depth of field, and uh, I'll show you the, the the problem that he was actually having. Uh, if I just drag, this is the file he sent me. It's an RLA file, but it could have been an, an RPF. It it really doesn't doesn't matter too much. And you'll see in the project window here that it does actually have Z depth uh, listed in its channel information. So it's millions of colors plus pre multiplied. Um, and it does have Z depth. Um, so I, what I'll do is just drag it down onto a fresh comp. Um, it's currently at 16 bit, but 8 8 bits fine. It, it really won't matter too much um, for the purpose of this. Now, the problem he was having is the render out of out of Maya was giving him Z depth that that was he was unable to sort of get the desired result from the Z depth channel information and I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to add an effect just right clicking in my effects controls here and 3D channel depth of field. Now if I put the maximum radius value to say 5 which which immediately makes the entire uh, I'll, I'll crank it up a little further I'll just go 10. It makes the entire image uh, uh, blurred um, and the first thing you, you you tend to need to do in this process is assess what sort of focal length the Z depth is reading. And what I mean by that is from the camera, from the position of the camera all the way back to your furthest object, um, what is that distance? And so the, the quick and easy thing to do is use your focal plane. Because your focal plane is basically uh, when you don't have the focal plane um, distance at the top entered in, if that's zero then the focal plane thickness will be from the camera's position into the scene or, or back towards the back of the scene and so what I'll do is if, if I put five in here the entire scene is clear and that means that from the camera to the back of the the, the very last object, um, it's it's five or less on the focal plane or or the focal distance is five or less, and that's really quite a small uh, number. And this is what the problem was for this particular user that the render coming out of Maya was actually storing the Z depth information in a very small focal depth. Now some 3D packages allow you to actually get in and adjust that focal depth um, based on the camera target distance or focal distance and uh, you'll just have to have a look at your documentation for your 3D package uh, just to see if that is adjustable. But we can actually fix this problem in uh, After Effects. So we know that it's, it's less than 5. So let's crank it down again, we'll go 2 and we'll see that there's no dis no difference, so it's less than 2. We'll go 1, it's less than 1. So we'll go 0.5. And straight away, you'll see that we now have um, a, a little bit of blur on this front couple of, uh, of cylinders here, but the last cylinder is not in blur. So we know that it is less than 1. So we know basically the focal distance between the camera uh, and the furthest object is less than one. So this is where we can uh, get a little bit tricky. What we're going to do is, I'm just going to reset that to zero. I'm going to go up to the focal plane first, and we have our sliders here, and you'll see that the values are minus 1000, 
to one thousand. Uh, sorry, minus ten thousand to ten thousand, and they're huge numbers. And sometimes, depending on how you've got your three D render set up, um, they're not even big enough to cover what you need. And you may need to do this process I'm about to show you in reverse and make those numbers larger. What we're going to do is right click on focal plane and edit the value, and that brings up this focal plane. Um, value settings here and we're going to have slider range from minus one to one and we'll go okay to that and we're going to do the exact same thing with focal plane thickness we'll just right click edit the value and the slider range we're going to go from zero to one and we'll go okay and now what that does if we you'll see that we can actually slide up. I'll, I'll uh, try to give us a bit more room here so you can see what, what's happening. You can actually slide those values and actually get a response. So it's it's blurry, the focal plane, as I'm, as I'm moving the focal plane up, it's coming, the blur is coming back towards the camera and we're actually getting a response now. So we can set the focal plane, let's set it to say point 0.35 something like that and now we can move the focal distance towards the camera and further away from the camera so if we wanted to isolate this central uh, cylinder here what we could do is I'll just bring this back a little bit so that we've got a bit of blur on the first and last cylinder and then I can slide my uh, focal plane thickness in so that it's about the distance between two cylinders and move it in and out and just isolate that one in the center there and then we can bring our radius down we set it quite high so we could illustrate where we were but bring it down to something a little more practical like uh, 1.5 something like that and so now we have the central cylinder is in focus and the fall off of depth of field blur is going away behind and away in front and that's exactly what you want and so we can I'll just undo that so we can move that depth of field to whichever cylinder or whichever part of the scene you want to hold the crisp focus so that's just a little tip and um, it's certainly something that I've run into before out of various 3D packages your render of the Z depth information sometimes those numbers just simply don't gel and uh, the biggest problem is that your focal plane and your focal plane thickness uh, sliders are simply too large in tolerance they, they're, they're minus, uh, minus 10,000 to plus 10,000 and uh, and zero to uh, to ten thousand on the focal plane thickness is just much too big for some of the renders. So the first thing you should always do is just get in, check your focal plane thickness um, by having the focal plane number at the top here set to zero, and just play with uh, the numbers. Type in some numbers until you basically test what the depth is from the camera position all the way to the last object or the furthest uh, object in your scene and then you'll know what your focal plane thickness is and therefore your, what your tolerance needs to be on these sliders. So give that a try if you've run into this problem before. Um, it, you, you can certainly solve the issue in After Effects but there are like I said some uh, instances in 3D where you can actually set the camera information up so that the render is a little better uh, on those numbers. So give that a try. Until next time, bye for now.